This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Next week, Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez will embark on a tour of Europe with one clear objective, to push for the recognition of a Palestinian state. Sánchez will visit Norway, Ireland, Belgium, Slovenia and Portugal to lobby for support, a month after Spain, Ireland, Malta and Slovenia all signed a joint declaration declaring their readiness to recognise Palestine when, in their words, the circumstances are right. In other words, when there's a European consensus. So in this video, we'll take a look at the history of EU-Palestine relations, why Spain, Ireland and other EU states want to recognise it, and whether the rest of Europe will follow suit. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So first, let's start with some context. Currently, only 9 out of the 27 EU member states recognise the state of Palestine as demarcated by the 1967 borders, also known as the Green Line. But most of these did so in 1988 when they were communist states and before they'd become EU members. In 2014, Sweden became the first EU country to recognise Palestine whilst being a member of the bloc, but since then no other EU country has formally recognised it. To understand why, we need to look at the EU's long history with Palestine. After 1974, when the UN General Assembly first adopted a resolution recognising the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination, national independence and sovereignty, the European community, which was the precursor to today's EU, began legitimising Palestinian rights in various declarations, most notably in its landmark Venice Declaration of 1980. The Venice Declaration promoted the right to existence and to security of all the states in the region, including Israel, and called for a dialogue with the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO, which was the official representative of the Palestinians. However, while Europe was committed to a two-state solution, it stopped short of recognising the Palestinian state explicitly. In its 1999 Berlin Declaration, the EU first said it would consider the recognition of a Palestinian state in due course, and since then other declarations supporting Palestinian statehood have also only used highly tentative language like when appropriate in 2012 and in principle in 2014. Now the other thing to mention here is that throughout this period the EU along with the US has played a role in supporting peace talks, but the US was and still is the dominant player in negotiations and generally more resistant to explicit recognition of a Palestinian state. Much of Israel's political establishment also views the EU as too sympathetic to Palestine and considered the EU's willingness to negotiate with the PLO, which had carried out a series of terror attacks against Israel in the 1970s, a sort of diplomatic betrayal. Conscious of both its limited diplomatic clout and the risk of upsetting Western allies in America and Israel, the EU's tone on the Israel-Palestine issue has thus been remarkably muted for most of recent history. Over the years, MPs across the EU, including in France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Greece, Luxembourg, Ireland and the UK, have all passed motions calling on their governments to recognise Palestine. But the EU and many member states have essentially ignored these calls. And the EU's current position is that, while they support a two-state solution, they'll only recognise Palestine once it's been described and established as part of a two-state solution. Over the last couple of weeks though, Spain, Ireland and other senior EU officials have started to make some much bolder statements. We've already done a full video on Ireland's pro-Palestine stance, which we definitely recommend you check out. But now Spain has become more vocal too, with the Spanish Foreign Minister confirming that Spain will recognise the state of Palestine by July. This idea has since been endorsed by Ireland, Slovenia and Malta, and last month European Council President Charles Michel suggested like-minded European countries could cooperate on the EU level to provide leverage to urge both Israel and the Palestinian Authority to conduct the reforms needed to make a two-state solution possible. Recognition of Palestine has long been a key foreign policy commitment for Sanchez's Pessoa, but this renewed effort has largely come about following the Israeli airstrike that killed seven charity workers travelling in an aid convoy in Gaza at the start of this month, which the charity's Spanish founder, Jose Andreas, said had targeted them systematically car by car, although Israel described the killings as unintentional and a tragic incident. In response, EU politicians like Sanchez are bringing the idea of Palestinian statehood 
back onto the agenda to put pressure on Israel to de-escalate in Gaza and perhaps revive the prospect of a two-state solution, which remains the EU's preferred outcome. Now, this isn't an entirely new idea, as the recognition of Palestine as part of a two-state solution has bounced in and out of European political debate for decades. In January, the EU's foreign affairs chief, Hossep Bure, said the creation of a Palestinian state was the only way to peace. And since then, other leaders like Macron have also said that recognition of Palestine will be part of a package response by the EU to the ongoing war in Gaza. So how likely is it that Sanchez's lobbying will work? And could Europe actually be about to recognise Palestine? Well, it's true that lots of the EU government seem to be tempering their support for Israel, at least rhetorically. Late last month, for instance, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz warned Netanyahu that Germany cannot stand by as Palestinians risk starvation. And on Monday, French President Emmanuel Macron, along with Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and Jordan's King Abdullah II, penned an open letter in the Washington Post calling for an immediate ceasefire. It's also true that explicit recognition of a Palestinian state isn't all that significant a shift from the EU's current position – given that a Palestinian state is necessarily a part of any two-state solution. Nonetheless, it still doesn't look all that likely, largely because even if EU support for Israel is waning in the aggregate, there's still probably too much diversity of opinion within the EU to agree on a common position. Germany, for example, has repeatedly reaffirmed its special commitment to Israel, while remaining pretty silent on the issue of a Palestinian state. Ultimately, it seems unlikely that the EU will recognise Palestine anytime soon, and Spain's new efforts to lobby for it could be seen more as a symptom of Europe's changing attitudes to Israel rather than a precursor to a formal shift in policy. However, this could change if the war in Gaza continues to escalate, and these changing attitudes are still politically important – both because they're another symptom of Israel's growing diplomatic isolation and because they represent yet another point of tension in the EU-US relationship. Now, watching our videos, it's understandable if, at times, you feel like the world isn't terribly safe. And, unfortunately, this can be the case online too. You might try your best to keep everything secure, maybe you try to rotate through favourite passwords online, but that's not always enough to keep you safe. In fact, the most common form of account hacking these days is called credential stuffing. Essentially, you use one of your normal passwords on a website that's poorly maintained, and then if it gets compromised, you could find that information landing on the dark web. Hackers then just attempt the same email and password combinations on your social network accounts, streaming services, banks, you get the point. Luckily for you, NordVPN has a whole bunch of tools that can keep you safe online. With their suite of threat protection tools, including a dark web monitor, which notifies you if someone leaks your credentials. It's not just that though, their threat protection can also warn you about phishing links and block malicious ads before you even see them. It really is all-round protection for your digital life. And if you sign up for a two-year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you also get four extra months totally free. So if you want to support the channel and improve our journalism, then make sure that you use the link in the description so that they know that you came from us. 